Imagine air travel at twice the speed you get today. That's no longer a fantasy, and the economic implications are profound and positive. Hello, I'm Steve Forbes, and this is What's Ahead, where you get the insights you need to better navigate these turbulent times. United Airlines set off flights of fancy when it announced that it had made an agreement to buy 15 supersonic jets from Boom Supersonic, an aerospace startup. The aircraft would go into service at the end of the decade, travel over 1,100 miles per hour, and carry upwards of 88 passengers. You could go from New York to London in three and a half hours, from San Francisco to Tokyo in as little as six hours. Of course, supersonic technology has been around for decades. The Concorde, operated for 20 years by British Airways and Air France, was grounded back in 2003. It was cramped. Its noise levels kept it from flying at high speeds over land, and it consumed prodigious amounts of fuel. But things have changed since then, including new and better materials, vastly improved engines, and huge advances in software that will enable Boom to rapidly test new designs during development, in contrast to the laborious, time-consuming methods used back in the days of the Concorde. Various aerospace experts believe that technological advances will meaningfully mitigate that noise factor. Still, skeptics were quick to bring our dreams down to earth. The aircraft is yet to be built and tested. So much can go wrong in such a complex undertaking that can add costs and cause delays. These planes will still continue to consume significantly more fuel than traditional aircraft. The cost of tickets will have to be very high compared to prices today. So how many travelers will pony up a lot of extra money to shave a few hours, especially as in-flight internet services get better and better? And of course, there are considerable regulatory and environmental obstacles, such as conducting actual supersonic test flights over land. United and Boom are trying to head off environmental objections over emissions by saying the new craft will use biofuels. But critics question the feasibility of that. Nonetheless, supersonic flight will be realized if regulators don't strangle it. Free markets always turn scarcity into abundance. Look at fantastic flat screen TV sets that can now be bought for a few hundred dollars today versus more than $15,000 a generation ago. The so-called learning curve kicks in, wherein people continuously find ways to make things better and cheaper. Entrepreneurship is all about overcoming obstacles, including those that stand in the way of supersonic aircraft. In fact, we may eventually get planes that will travel far faster than what Boom and United are planning and at ever more affordable cost. I'm Steve Forbes. Thanks for listening. Do send in your comments and suggestions. Look forward to being with you soon again.